Athletes, if you're not getting faster, chances are 90% of the gains are going to waste with common methods you were told to do since you were a child. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the methods you need to stop doing, what to do instead, and why this could impact your speed for the worst or for the better. I don't believe the Rice method is the most optimal way to recover from injuries, but that's a debate for another day. The real issue is icing to prevent or reduce the of healing process you get from icing. So when you train or work out, what you're doing in every single exercise is beating your body down, beating the muscle fibers down so they can grow back stronger. And the growing back stronger part comes from healing the muscle fibers and the tendons from the beat down you gave them from the plyometrics and the compound lifts. Icing the muscles and the tendons will feel amazing. You will feel like a fresh new person in the first probably 30 to 60 minutes due to something called the analgesic effect. And to be honest, placebo strong as fuck. Even though icing feels so good, it still delays the healing process of DOMS particularly. And DOMS is delayed onset muscle soreness. So generally gonna delay the healing process of recovering from soreness or preventing soreness from a hard workout. So the solution I have for you is we don't want to train like a bodybuilder or a powerlifter. We wanna train like an athlete, which means we need to manage our volume very, very closely. I'm gonna give you some rule of thumbs. You wanna keep your workouts under 60 minutes. When you're doing max effort sprint sessions, you wanna probably stay under 200 meters worth of sprints. So an example workout would be six times 20 meters. That would be about 120 meters worth of sprints in total for the whole workout. When you're doing vertical jump, plyometrics or exercises you want to keep it around two to four sets and two to three exercises we do not want to do six to eight different exercises within one workout that's all vertical jump related and also for the reps you usually want to stay under 10 reps that four to six rep range is going to be best for maximum explosiveness and for lifting like i said we're not training like a bodybuilder or a power lifter we're only going to do one to two compound lifts we're not having a leg day we're not having a push pull day it's just straight out full body compound lifts with good form three to four sets of four to six reps. You usually wanna stay in that range when we're building max strength or power. And another little tip is I would do one squat movement and one hinge pattern every single lower body session. I will also put the research studies about what icing actually does to prevent soreness and injuries in the description below. And I'll probably put it somewhere here while I'm editing the video. I have a Black Friday sale on all of my programs. Just jump, just sprint, and just protect are 45% off. The Speed Academy for the first month will be $6, which is, I believe, 80% off. And then the lifetime membership, so the one-time payment for all 12 months, will be $50 off. All you need to do is go to the description and use the coupon codes I have for whatever program you want, or go to the pinned comment to check that out. If you're watching this after Black Friday or the holidays, then just use code Jamari. You should be able to get about 10 to 15% off whatever program you want. In this next research study, we're gonna talk about static stretching on soreness. In this research paper, it states, unfortunately, the evidence strongly suggests that stretching does not prevent DOMS. Studies show that nothing short of amputation will prevent DOMS, and certainly not stretching. Whatever effect it has on inflammation in connective tissue, it does not add up as a DOMS cure. Now we know that stack stretching does not prevent delayed onset muscle soreness, but there's one more common mistake people make when they associate static stretching with helping injuries and recovery. People believe that stretching improves range of motion. Now, there actually is some truth to this. When you static stretch, you do get range of motion increases, but only when you stretch for over 30 minutes, and honestly, it's really 45 to 60 minutes worth of straight time. These are short-term, very small incremental range of motion increases that also lose very, very fast if you stop stretching just for a short period of time, even as little as a week. I know some of you guys have tried static stretching and if you stopped like I have, and my athletes also have, you'll notice that you could probably stretch for about two to three days and all of a sudden you stop stretching and you're just stiff again, right? You stop stretching for one to two days, you feel like trash. There's a reason, it's because it's short-term gains, it's very short-term range of motion increases that do not help your sport. There's also a huge risk of tendon injuries, stuff like ACL tears, PCL tears, MCL tears, Achilles tears, when you start improving range of motion in muscles that you do not have strength. So what am I trying to say? Am I just telling you to stop static stretching completely? Well, if you grew up on static stretching or your coaches have told you to do this your whole life and you're just stuck with it, that's perfectly fine. Do it in your post-workout. But here's what I would suggest to do instead. First of all, if you really like static stretching, the most simple answer is full range of motion lifting. So a full range of motion RDL will have much more long-term gains on straight leg flexibility versus just static stretching it 
for what 30 minutes a day so you can literally do a full range of motion rd eccentric rdl with three sets of eight with a good you know plate or two plates on the barbell push close to failure and you will get amazing gains in range of motion and flexibility without having to sit there for 30 minutes but i'm going to give you some exercises to improve hip mobility which i think is a little bit more effective than flexibility the first one's going to be a 90 90 hip lift i got this from connor harris you're going to put a ball in the middle of your thighs and then you're going to drive the heels into the ground while having a 90 degree knee angle you're gonna breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth very slowly for five seconds each direction next one's going to be banded split stance rotations you can use a dumbbell or a band or you can use both or literally nothing you just come complete you could use banded stuff around your hips you can use dumbbells or you can use completely body weight you don't need to use anything honestly um you're gonna get a split stance right so heel to toe roll it back now you're in a split stance quarter squat position then hinge backwards and then you're going to do full rotations by driving that knee and doing kind of like a punching rotation where you punch with one hand and then you roll with the other one and then you switch it slowly you do about six to eight reps on both sides and then switch legs. And then the last one obviously is gonna be the 90 degree lunge isometric hold. This will improve mobility and isometric strength, which is gonna help you feel a lot less stiff and help you with recovery because isometrics are one of the most important things for tendon recovery. All you're gonna do is get a 90 degree lunge and hold this position while driving the big toe into the ground and driving the heel a little bit out to get a little more glute activation. This study shows carbohydrates are the main source of energy for athletic events. Eating carbohydrates before athletic athletic events will help restore glycogen stores, which may be called upon during prolonged high intensity exercise. So we all know that low carb is a hot topic when it comes to losing weight, but this is for general population. If you're an athlete, there's absolutely no reason for you to be doing low carb at all. The first thing is that people are doing low carb to lose weight, right? Losing weight is a calorie deficit, right? The best ways to lose weight as an athlete is going to be a 300 to 500 calorie deficit and a high protein diet for a higher thermic effect and to promote muscle building. It's simply, it is just that simple. There is no secret to it. There's no fasting. There's no, you shouldn't be fasting. You shouldn't be doing low carb. You shouldn't be doing any of that if you can. And the big reason why is that carbs, like we said earlier, are your fuel for energy. The biggest issue is that they're your fuel for your tendons. Jumping and changing direction, your tendons are the primary mover for your risk. If you skip out on carbs, you risk long-term injuries to the tendon like Achilles tears or ACL tears. And you're also going to hurt your recovery process because you could be leaving every single workout more inflamed and less energy overall you'll be leaving every workout more inflamed and with less energy and we know if you have less energy you're also going to be outputting less power which means you're going to be getting less out of every single workout overall which is overall going to develop more slow twitch fibers and make you a worse athlete now the biggest thing to do instead is just simply eat carbs but take out processed carbs so if you can try to switch out processed carbs like bread or mcdonald's with stuff like fruit this is the obvious option find one to two fruits don't overcomplicate it you could probably like at least one to two fruits like for me i only like pineapples and grapes and sometimes strawberries so that's the only thing i eat right i barely have bananas i barely eat anything else find the one to two fruits you like and being a 300 to 500 calorie deficit if you're trying to lose weight but for the most part most athletes should be eating at maintenance or 300 to 500 calorie surplus and you need to find what calories you want to be eating at go ahead and check out the calorie calculator in the description below now recovery you only need to recover when you stress your body out correctly stressing comes from the right type of workouts so if you don't know how to train and do the right type of workouts then you need to watch this video right here